Liz. Yes. Back in the Halicon days of 2005. Don't say that when I'm drinking. <laughs> Back in the Halicon days of 2005. I remember it now before AO3 was a thing. Oh my back God. when we were all trapped on fanfiction.net. Fanfiction.net. I was trapped there too. I read so much dreary fic. So much dreary fic. My favorite dreary author is Maya. She took all of her stuff off the internet when she became a real published oh author. Oh my God. But I have it all downloaded on a PDF. <laughs> I reread one of them last week. And then I read this book and I was like, oh right, Drary is real. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was in my master's program for architecture and there was a lovely compatriot in there with me who shall remain nameless so I don't out her. But she wore a t-shirt to class one day that said, Drary, everything but the glasses. And I would not stop laughing. <laughs> I'm drunk. And Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy <laughs> are the perfect enemies to lovers couple. The end. That's it. That's the podcast. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Give me the microphone, Casey. Welcome to This Is Lit, a podcast where we drink and talk about our favorite books. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Casey. So raise a glass and let's get started. Okay, Liz. What are you drinking today? I am drinking hot cocoa. Well, that is stupendous for you. I am drinking Riunidis Lambrusco. Yes. I am about a bottle of wine and a half deep into the alcohols. And I've had very little food today, and I am feeling it, Mr. Krabs. You know in February, when I can drink again, mm -hmm. we're going to have to get a Liz Gets Drunk episode, and we just talk about something that I know like the back of my hand. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yes, it's going to be good yeah. times. Yeah. But for now, we are talking about our second to last, our pendul penultimate Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Penultimate. Good book, Edward. Thank you. Yes. Uh, this is the sixth Harry Potter book in the uh, seven book series, so we are close to the finish line. This my one came out in two thousand five. This one is um, it's shorter, also, it, it, but it's still a hefty read. It's still a hefty read. It's much shorter than Order of the Phoenix, but it's still six hundred and fifty two pages. Yes, yes, and it is one of my favorites. But it's also one that I've read the least. Yes. What we're going to try and do here is kind of go through a summary of it. Liz has got one pulled up on her phone. Yes. And we're going to do that first, and then we're going to discuss the book and, like, its themes, because, again, very long book, lots of information to cover. Yes, because we were quite uh, pleased with the last Harry Potter episode we did, where we did a real quick summary, and then we talked about the themes afterward. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, side note, this is the only Harry Potter book that I have, one of the originals, that does not have the dust cover. This is the only one I have without the dust cover. Mine's Got fading along there yeah. because it sits in the window. I don't know what has happened to the dust cover of mine, but I have the dust covers for all the others. Oh, I don't have a dust covers. All right, so this book starts out with um, the Minister of Magic coming to the Muggle Prime Minister saying, "Shit has happened. Uh, we're now protecting you. Pretty much everything is bad. Everything is awful." Don't worry about it. Everything is awful. And so, um, the uh, regular minister is uh, worried because it was uh, Cornelius Fudge and Scriminger who come to talk to him. Yes. Which they will become important later. Um, Cornelius Fudge, we already have known for a while yes. as the Minister of Magic. But Scriminger is just introduced, and we're also introduced to Kingsley Shacklebolt in this chapter. That's the only reason I'm covering this chapter. Mm -hmm. Next. Uh, Dumbledore shows up to pick up Harry from the Dursley's house only after about two weeks of summer um, to take him to the Thank God, that the poor burrow. kid. Finally. Um, to take him to the burrow, but they, where uh, Ron and Hermione are. But uh, Dumbledore makes a pit stop on the way with Harry and um, introduces him to... Well, they go to this house that is completely trashed. And we meet Horace Slughorn. Which a lot of people say Slughorn is not a very good... Uh, you find out later he used to be head of Slytherin House. 
a lot of people are like, oh, he's not a very good Slytherin. And I'm like, surrounds himself with powerful people. When he thinks people are coming for him, he trashes the house and turns himself into a chair. Yeah, that sounds pretty Slytherin. The other thing that happens in this chapter, though, is that yes. the is that the, um, the strange sisters. That's in, that's uh, in another chapter. No, that's in chapter two, Spinner's End. Oh, yeah. The Lestrange chap- sisters. Oh, yep. I skipped. Narcissa and Bellatrix go to meet with Severus Snape. And Narcissa is worried because Voldemort has given Draco a... Uh, a job. A job, a mission, and she is scared for him. And so she and Snape make an unbreakable vow that um, Snape will help protect Draco Malfoy. And so we're still kind of on the team of we don't know whose team Snape really is on the first time you read this. Mm -hmm. Um, So they make an unbreakable vow, which means, you know, it's an unbreakable vow. It's kind of in the name. But uh, you also discover that Lucius Malfoy is in Azkaban. He's kind of trying to kill of, chil- school mm-hmm. children. He's kind of fallen out of favor with the Dark Lord because of his failure at the Ministry, and so Narcissa thinks that Voldemort assigning this dangerous task to Draco is revenge. And Bellatrix is crazy as per usual. And then we meet Horace Slughorn. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Um, with Harry, with Dum- the reason Dumbledore brought Harry is because he wants to kind of convince Slughorn to come back and teach at Hogwarts. So that way, uh, Harry can be quote unquote collected. Slughorn surrounds himself with the famous, the powerful, the influential, and now with Harry being the darling of the Daily Prophet, the chosen one who's going to defeat Voldemort when only a year ago. They were doing everything they could to slander his name um, and take him down a peg as much as they could. Uh, Horace uh, Slughorn knows Harry Potter would be a very powerful ally to quote-unquote collect. So he does agree to come back to Hogwarts. As the potions master. Yes. And so... uh, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, we're going to go through this real quick, so we're going to skip a lot. I'm sorry. Um, Harry, Ron, and Hermione get their uh, OWL results, and uh, Harry does exceptionally well. He's a yeah. little surprised. Okay, voila. Yes. An A in astronomy, an E in care of magical creatures, an E in charms, an O in defense against the dark arts. Outstanding. A P in divination, an E in herbology, a D in history of magic. An E in potions and an E in transfiguration. Um, so he is one grade level short of going into advanced potion making, which he would need to become an Auror, which Harry desperately wants to become an Auror. Um, however, since uh, Slughorn is the one in charge, he lets Harry get into the potions class, which we'll, we will discuss at a later point in the podcast. Um... But yeah, and Ron does just about the same, and Hermione is Hermione. <laughs> Outstandings across the board, except yes. for in Defense Against the Dark Arts, which she gets an exceeds expectation. Yes. <clears throat> Time out. Wizarding grades are fucking weird, okay? American grades are fucking weird. Fair. Continue. Have, have, you, have you seen the grading scale in Europe versus the grading scale here? It's fine. If you are an international listener here... 59% or below is an F. Is a failure. Is a failure. In, I know, in Europe, like, 20 to 30% is an F. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, yeah. So whenever American students tell you that the system is broken, we ain't lying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway... They go to Diagon Alley to get their supply, their school supplies, and yeah, 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 yeah. Harry Potter, who is, spends this book being obsessed with Draco Malfoy, Yo. <laughs> um, follows him to Borgen and Burke's in Nocturne Alley, where he overhears Draco talking to somebody about how to repair something, threatens the shop owner with a gentleman named Fender Greyback, <laughs> uh, and Harry is instantly like, Draco's a Death Eater! Which, 
you know. He's not wrong. No. He's not wrong. And this is the one, well, Harry has spent the last five books being like, it's Snape and Draco, it's Snape and Draco, and it's never Snape and Draco, and this is the one book where it is, in fact, Snape and Draco. <laughs> Both Snake and Draco, and no one listens to oh, him. Snake? Snake? Snape. Snake. <laughs> Leave me alone, I'm drunk. <laughs> okay. Um, and so then on the Hogwarts Express, um, oh, and Harry is now Quidditch captain, which puts him on the level of a Hogwarts prefect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that whole lifetime ban from Quidditch really didn't pan out very well. Um, so, uh, Ron and Hermione go to the prefect car, Harry hangs out with Neville and Luna, and he follows Draco Malfoy under his invisibility cloak to his car to eavesdrop on him, and, uh, Malfoy says something about, um, a mission that he was tasked with and brags about it and then as he's leaving the car he stupefies Harry because he saw Harry's foot in the invisibility yeah, cloak. Yeah, Harry was wearing an invisibility cloak and he stomps, he curb stomps him. Yeah, he breaks his nose. What a dick. <sighs> and, um, but the person who finds him is Tonks and you find out she and others have been placed in Hogsmeade and around Hogwarts for security purposes. Mm -hmm. So the Order of the Phoenix is protecting Hogwarts. Tonks sure. is on a downward spiral. Yeah. She's she's depressed about something, and Harry assumes it's because her cousin Sirius died. Because Harry still has not fully recovered from that blow either. Yeah. Um, Harry's... Harry has kind of leveled out a little bit since the last book. He's had some time to deal with his PTSD. He's had some time to talk about what's happened, and now he's able to... Now that he has information. He knows what to do with it. Um, Dumbledore also tells Harry that uh, Dumbledore will be giving Harry some private lessons in the evenings. And uh, when they get to school, Dumbledore announces that Professor Snape is taking over the Defense Against the Dark Arts class, a position he has coveted for a very long time. And Horace Slughorn will be the new potions master of Hogwarts. Which Harry rightfully assumed that Slughorn would be taking the defense against the Dark Arts position, just like every other teacher every other year. Right. So this is another one of those subverting expectations uh, yeah. things that we talked yeah, about, because sure. the pattern had already been established. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Harry surprisingly gets into the potions class because Horace wants to collect him. And also, um, I'm sorry, I keep calling him Horace because my husband is like, if we ever get a boy dog, we're naming him Horace. Terrible. Well, his name would be uh, Captain uh, Horatio Barker. Horatio is different <laughs> yes, than Horace. Yes, but he would like to nickname him Horace. I'm like, why Horace can't we call him Barker? I, <laughs> Horace is what I named the creature on the back of the door that I made for Halloween. Oh, With okay. things and the dragon eyes. Yeah, but we have yet to have a boy dog, and that may or may not be by design. Mm -hmm. um, instead, we have two dogs named after Roman goddesses. <laughs> um, so Harry gets a second hand potions book that was previously owned by the quote-unquote half-blood prince the half-blood prince and he makes uh comments and annotations in the margins that help harry with his potion brewing and because he uses the tips and spells in this book he is able to win a contest in class which allows him to get 12 hours of liquid luck from slughorn the Felix Felictus. Felix Felicius. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sober and I still can't say it. <laughs> Liquid luck. <laughs> and uh, this also, um, this class also endears Hermione, a muggle-born, to Slughorn. Yes. And he sees a lot of potential, potential in, her in her because he is reminded of Lily Evans, Harry's mother. <laughs> Uh, with Hermione's brilliance and also being her being a brilliant and courageous witch and also being a muggle-born just like Lily Evans was. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, Harry also is 
see how it's going. Harry starts his lessons with the Dumbledore, which are um, the the, pev- the pev- pen- pensive pensive. I don't always want to say pevensy like pevensy like, like Lucy a- Pevensy. Yeah, yeah. Pensy. Uh, law, a uh, different book series. Um, listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Um, so Voldemort believes the only way that Harry is going to be able to defeat Voldemort is if he understands him completely. Who he and is, yeah. By doing that, he has to understand who Voldemort is and how he came to be the way he is. And so, Dumbledore has this horseshit line about <laughs> <laughs> Harry now knows everything that Dumbledore does. Bullshit. Bullshit. You're a liar. Bullshit. You're a liar. We have to keep going. We're only on chapter 10 of 30. Um, Fine, we're only 16 minutes in. We're doing okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah so Dumbledore is having Harry go into the pensive and see and see memories Dumbledore's memories of Voldemort as a child yes in the orphanage but this first memory is about um Voldemort's mother and grandfather right and how they were whose names are Tom Riddle Sr. no no not his grandfather no no his mother is Morvolo and Mar uh yeah Marvolo and her name starts with Mar- M too. Marope. Marope. Thank you. Marvolo and Marope. And so, uh, yes, but they are very proud. They're pure blood descendants of Slytherin. And you know, there's a Habsburg situation that has kind of happened, except it's with their eyes instead of their jaw. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Casey, for getting that reference. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, this whole it's all the inbreeding. Inbreeding is not a good idea. Uh, Pro tip: don't. Yeah, don't inbreed. Not a good idea. And so he sees that you know Voldemort's mother was horribly abused. She was in love with Tom Riddle, a muggle-born, a muggle-born, a muggle man, a muggle man. Yeah, and um, you know her father would not have allowed any kind of relationship at all. And you discover that. Um, she and Tom Riddle ran away together. Well. <laughs> Air quotes. Ran away, together. <laughs> ran away together. But the real crux of the issue is that Marope Gaunt used a love potion to get Tom Riddle to run away with her. Yes. And continued to use a love potion. And after the birth of Tom, she thought, oh, I have his baby. He won't leave me now. And guess what? He fucking did. He, he sure left her. He did. <laughs> Yeah, and but the the concept of a um, child being incapable of uh, having empathy for others is suggested in in this yes. and in some of the Pottermore stuff. Yeah, that if is... a child is the um, product of a relationship that was only in place because of a love spell, yes, that child will be unable to feel empathy. Um, it in in plain terms, it is. It, a child conceived under the influence of a love potion is incapable of love. Yeah, because the love potion is not real. Exactly. The love is not real. The love is not there. Um, so, I've lost my place. And so, um, Harry has that uh, and learns about that. And then Harry, who is now Quidditch captain, has Quidditch tryouts for the new team. And realizes that there's a lot of girls signing up. Mm-hmm. What's going on here? And Hermione is like, dude, you're a hot ticket item. All these girls are wanting Harry your attention. Harry Potter doesn't know because Harry Potter is gay. Harry Potter is oblivious because he's too busy obsessing over Draco Malfoy. Because he's gay. <laughs> he's at least bi. Uh, <laughs> me straight ass cis white woman is going Harry Potter is at least bi. <laughs> um... And so he sends, like, a bunch of them home, does Quidditch tryouts, um, and Hermione may or may not have helped Ron get on the Quidditch team by confusing... Confounding. Confounding Cormac. Cormac McLaggen. That's a very Scottish name. (laughs) Yeah, and so it's like, this is like the book where it becomes blatantly obvious that Ron and Hermione have a thing for each other, and neither one of them is too stubborn to admit it. 
so you're like, ah, gosh darn it. And then, um, let's see, we have the first um, Hogsmeade visit, which does not go well for Harry. It's kind of unpleasant. Uh, Argus, full, no, McDungus is in the hog head and he is hawking loot he stole from 12 Grimmauld Place, which rightfully belongs to Harry as Sirius named him his heir. Mm -hmm. And so Harry kind of loses his shit, which he should. Right. And, but while that's going on, they overhear uh, Katie Bell talking, Katie Bell, who is on the Quidditch team, talking to one of her friends about um, delivering this necklace and Turns out the necklace is cursed. Katie becomes cursed as a result. It's pretty ugly. Yeah. The scene that happens here. It's a very ugly scene. She, like, flies into the air and screams and... Yeah, and it's bad. It's not great. And Harry recognizes the necklace as something from... <coughs> Borgen and Burks. Borgen and Burks. And this only emphasizes... This only, like, breaks Harry. It's like, it was Draco. He's a Death Eater. And McGonagall is like, no, Draco was serving detention with me. Ugh. So he's like, dang it. Um, and then we get, uh, we get another lesson from Dumbledore, and we see Tom at the Tom Riddle at the orphanage, and he gets talked to snakes, and he's stealing things, and he's a very he's 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 exhibiting all the signs of an early serial killer. In all honesty. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. He's not being treated very well, but that is no excuse for you to be a dick. It's, the thing is, the thing with Malfoy. We're going back to Malfoy, yes. Let's jump back to Malfoy. Jump back to Malfoy. The thing with Malfoy is that he's been put into a position. I mean, he's the one who gave yeah. Kelly Bell the necklace. He's been put into a position against his will. Lucius Malfoy is yeah. an ask man. And Voldemort is not happy with the Malfoy family. And so instead of just, like, letting Lucius Malfoy lie in Azkaban, he has to take it out on the Malfoys and put Malfoy into this position. Yeah. Where he is trying to offer off cursed necklaces to other school children. Yeah. And I do kind of want to get into the duality of Draco and Harry at the end of this. Yeah, for sure. Um, so remind me when we get closer to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, then we have the first Quidditch match. Ron is not doing very well, uh, because he's, you know, fighting with Hermione because he found out Hermione kissed Victor Crumb when they were, like, 14, and his sister Ginny is dating Team Thomas, mm -hmm. and it's, like... Year five was Harry's year to be a dick. Year six is Ron's year to be a dick. Um, and Hermione's just a bitch all the time. Uh, a badass bitch. Mm -hmm. But, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, Harry fakes putting liquid luck into Ron's polyjuice potion. They end up winning. And he ends up playing very well because of that, because he actually had some confidence and he believed in himself. And Ron's confidence has always been an issue running through these books because his confidence, he keeps getting, and also too, Ron is also getting left out of the slug club, which yeah. makes him feel slighted. And I understand that because Harry's always the one who gets the limelight. and Ron's always had to deal with that his whole life, being the youngest of all those children, all those boys. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I understand where he's coming from. Sure. And so Christmas, uh, the blah, blah. And then they have, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They have Slughorn's Christmas party where Hermione invites Cormac to slight Ron because she was going to invite Ron. And then Ron is like, I don't want to go with you even if you asked me. And so she's like, fine, I won't. And invited somebody who she knew would make Ron jealous. <sighs> and Harry is trying to... Like, this, it's rumored this one girl is going to put a love potion on Harry to... Ramilda Vane. Yes, Ramilda Vane. Which, her last name is quite apt. Well done. Um, Ramilda Vane is going to put a love potion on Harry to get invited to Slughorn's party. Uh, this is also, too, after they start apparition class. And everyone has a lot of trouble with it. Um, 
And so afterwards, Harry is talking to Luna, and he's like, do you want to go to the Slughorn party with me? As, like, friends. And she's like, she's the sweetest Luna's reaction. Luna's the best. Luna is the best. She's like, I've never been to a party with anybody as friends before. I've never had friends. This will be fun. <laughs> and so she goes, and at that party, Draco is caught lurking outside. Slughorn says he can stay. And Snape talks to him and is like, stop being a little shit, which only proves to Harry that it's like, it's Draco and it's Snape, and everyone's like, it's not Draco and Snape, but it is Draco and Snape. <sighs> then Christmas happens back at the burrow. Um, Jenny is having trouble with Dean. Uh, Bill and Fleur are preparing for their wedding in the summer, mm -hmm. which is a great coupling. I love that. Um, and uh, Percy is still estranged from the rest of the Weasley family. Right. That basically sums up Christmas. Um, and then Harry does another session with Dumbledore when he gets back. And it is a memory of uh, Horace Slughorn talking to Tom Riddle about something called a Horcrux. And there's something wrong with the memory. And Dumbledore realizes it's been tampered with, and so he wants Harry to get the actual memory from Slughorn about what he told Tom Riddle about Horcruxes. Mm -hmm. And Harry asks about the Horcruxes, and Dumbledore's like, I'll explain later. Also, too, we've skimmed over the introduction of the locket and the ring. The ring, the was, ring was, here was at the, the very beginning. beginning of the book. Yeah, the and, ring was here at the beginning of the book. And Dumbledore's hand is weird. Uh, it's since all the beginning, broken up. yeah, it's all broken up at the beginning of the book, and uh, in the original memory, we I skimmed over the introduction of the locket of Salazar Slytherin. Mm -hmm. um, but Dumbledore does explain that Horcruxes are items that a wizard can keep a part of their soul in, like the diary from Chamber of Secrets. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and so um, then. Uh, Ron's birthday rolls around, and so, uh, he, um, Harry is still trying stuff from the book in the Half-Blood Prince with the notes and the margins. Hermione is warning him against it. Even Jenny is telling him, warning him against it, because, you know, she had her entire self taken over by a diary when she was 11. Mm-hmm. So, no wonder Jenny is immediately suspicious of this book. But there's spells in there that Harry has never heard of before, and he tries them. And You know, I mean, the worst thing that's happened is he's made Ron float over his bed. So it's been nothing nefarious yet. Um, but for uh, Ron's birthday, Harry and Ron end up... Uh, or, no. Ron... Harry gives Ron the chocolates that were given to him by Romilda Vane. Because Ron finds him, he's like, you're going to eat these? And Harry's like, no, you can have them. Go, go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. And then Ron is infatuated with her. Mm -hmm. And Harry realizes he's been put over under a love potion. He takes him to Slughorn to get it reversed. And Slughorn's like, oh, well, in honor of your birthday, let's have a drink. I've been saving oh, this. this mead. Yeah, I've been saving this for Professor Dumbledore. I was going to give it to him, but I don't think he'll notice if a little bit is missing. And Ron takes the first sip, and Ron is poisoned, and Harry ends Ron up... Ron has a rough day here. Yeah, Ron has a rough day, and the only reason Ron is saved is because Harry finds a stone in Slughorn's office that he knows will protect some... A Beazor. Some, yeah, a Beazor, which, which protects someone from poisoning. He learned about... In... His first year from Snape. Yes, he did. Like, and <laughs> it is also in the book... With the half blood prince, it's in the margins, which is what makes him think of it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So while Ron is in the hospital wing, Lavender comes. This is now in. the second time yes. someone has been almost murdered at Hogwarts this year. And with Dumbledore being the target, the intended, the intended target. target. Um, everyone says Hogwarts is safe, but it's really not. No, 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 no. no. Um, but, um, while Ron is in the hospital wing, Lavender 
does not like the way that Hermione, Hermione and responds Ron to this. are acting and responding. And so she and Ron break up, or Lavender and Ron break up, mm-hmm. and Hermione and Ron's relationship falls. Finally. Thank Finally. God. Two-thirds through the book. Uh, oh, Harry runs into a drunk Sybil Trelawney. Ah, uh, yes. And she's talking to him, and she's she's not doing well. Her what? sight's not going well. The, the other thing in this chapter is whenever Voldemort starts working at Bergen and Bork's. Yes! Ber- Ber- Bergen and Burks. Bjergen and Borks. Borgen and Burks. Borgen and Burks. <laughs> Voldemort, and so there's a memory of him talking to Hepzibiah Hufflepuff, who is the descendant of, descendant Helga, of Hufflepuff. Helga Hufflepuff, who has the goblet, the cup. Voldemort, essentially the memories of Voldemort stealing the cup. Yeah. Um, has Hepzibiah also had the locket? Mm-hmm. She had a locket. She had Slytherin's locket yep. and and Helga Hufflepuff's cup. Mm-hmm. And I will say, working retail in the service industry. Is enough to turn anybody into a dark lord, quite honestly. <laughs> Hepzibiah Smith dies two yes. days after Voldemort visits her. Suspiciously. Uh, the house elf was convicted of poisoning her cocoa. Mm-hmm. And uh, her cup and her locket went missing. Yes. And then the next chapter... Yeah, no, we'll room. That is the one where Harry is following Draco into a room that is not on the, uh, not on the Marauder's map. The and there's room nothing of requirement. In, yes, and there's nothing in there except a cabinet. Just a big old cabinet. And so he's like, I have no idea what's going on with this cabinet. But it's probably not important. Yeah, it's Let's probably disregard. not important. Let's disregard this cabinet whose matching twin is in Nocturne Alley. But yeah, and so Harry decides to uh, refocus his efforts on trying to get the unedited memory from Slughorn. We also see another memory that Voldemort, of Voldemort approaching Dumbledore yes. for the Defense Against the Dark Arts position. And Dumbledore Knowing saying no. that Dumbledore is not going to give it to him, mm-hmm. but his real motive was to get a hold of the Sword of Gryffindor, which he did never successfully no, get a hold of. No, he never got a hold of the Sword of Gryffindor. And at this point, Harry has no idea why... The cup, the locket, the sword yeah. would be important. Which that adds insult to injury now that I think about the second book. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it sh- sure does. And the seventh book. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, and so he... Renews his efforts to get the unedited memory from Professor yes. Slughorn. And so he takes the uh, liquid luck and heads down to... Aragog the giant spider's funeral because yeah, Aragog is dead. Rip. Yes. Rip. Press F to pay respects to Aragog. Please don't pour one out. I have white carpet. Press F to play, pay respects. No, don't press F. <laughs> Who knows what it'll do to the recording? <laughs> Man. <laughs> anyway, so Aragog's dead. Harry goes to be with Hagrid, who is Which, very upset. Daniel Radcliffe in this scene was high as a fucking kite. In the movie, the movie is hilarious, yeah. High as a fucking kite. And everyone's like, no, he wasn't. And I'm like, he, dude was drunk and high. <laughs> mm-hmm. He even admitted it. He's like, that's the only way I was going to get to feel good enough for that scene to play true. <laughs> uh, you know, sometime it be that way, though. And so Harry does manage to get... Because Slughorn is also at yeah. Aragog's funeral. Yes. And it all works out because of the liquid luck. Slughorn, at the end of the night, breaks down into tears and gives yes. Harry the correct memory. So instead of Slughorn telling Voldemort, never ask me about that dark magic again, he gives Voldemort every single detail he needs to know in order to create a horcrux. And you discover that the only way to make a horcrux is... A horcrux is an item that holds a piece of your soul... Effectively making you immortal. And, and if you is, have a horcrux, you can survive death. It is implied that Horus Slughorn has one in the hourglass. It's implied, what? but it's never stated. What? The hourglass? Isn't that mentioned in here? Or is can, that a movie thing? Can you give me a page number? Hmm. Or was that a Pottermore thing I read? 
I haven't been on Pottermore in ages, so if Slughorn has a Horcrux, it's fucking news to me. Yeah. Uh, well, hmm. Jeebity, jeebity. Anyway, so, that may uh, or may not be true. Please don't check me. The uh-huh. only way to create a Horcrux, the only way to split your soul... Is to commit murder. Is to commit murder. There has to be some... There's something And Voldemort so... asks specifically... Could you have more than one More Horcrux? than one. And he's like, the effort it takes to make one Horcrux, to split your soul in two more than once, is ridiculously insane. It is theoretically possible, but no wizard has ever done it. And so we have to understand with... Uh, and then Dumbledore reveals that Voldemort made seven Horcruxes. Fucking seven. Seven Horcruxes. Or split his soul into seven pieces. Because seven is a very magically binding number. Seven days of the week. Um, seven deadly sins. Seven deadly sins. Uh, even the murder of crows. There's seven of them. Seven is a magically binding number. That's why there's seven Harry Potter books. Right. Um, seven years of Hogwarts. Um so, the Horcruxes that they know of right now are the diary, which Harry de- destroyed in year two. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ring. Which Dumbledore which destroyed Dumbledore at the beginning destroyed. of this book. Um, the ring, and they know... Um, Helga Hufflepuff's cup. Helga Hufflepuff's cup. The Slytherin locket. Slytherin locket. And potentially something of Rowena Ravenclaw's. Something of Rowena Ravenclaw's that they don't know about, and... Um, Nagini. Yeah, and Nagini. But they the ones they know about at this point in time are the locket or are the, the diary. The diary, the, the locket, ring, the ring. The locket. Yeah, so they only know three of the seven, and they believe Voldemort kept it well, Dumbledore knows one of them and is not saying anything about it. Mm-hmm. <gasps> um But yeah, so he Tells Harry, this is our mission now. Voldemort can only be defeated if we destroy the rest of the Horcruxes first. Mm -hmm. And so that is their mission. Dumbledore has given Harry the mission of finding and destroying all the Horcruxes. So that way they can defeat Lord Voldemort. Right. Uh, Meanwhile, Harry is getting more and more suspicious and more and more obsessed with Draco. Which culminates in... There's no better way to say this. They fight with their wands in the boys' bathroom. Harry almost kills Yes, Draco. Using the se- Serpensordia. Sectum Sempra. Sectum Sempra. I'm looking Serpensordia. at the Serpensordia. What is that? I'm looking at the What word. is Serpensordia, though? That's a thing. That's a snake spell. That's from Chamber of Secrets. Yes. So Sectum Sempra is a spell invented by the Half-Blood Prince and written into the margins of his potions book. And Harry uses it on a whim, and it absolutely... It almost kills Draco. It eviscerates him. Yeah. It absolutely eviscerates him. It practically disembowels him. Harry is horrified that he's done this. immediately calls for help. Yeah, he's horrified. And who should arrive? Snape. But Severus Snape. Who immediately goes about mending Draco's wounds Mm -hmm. and helping him. And Snape seems pretty upset with Harry. Yeah. And asks for his... Potions book. Yeah. He's like, bring me your potions textbook. Yeah. Because Snape seems to understand something. Something's going on. For some reason, Snape seems to know where yeah. Harry got this spell. Harry gives Snape Ron's. Yes. Potions book. And so Snape can't prove yeah. where he Harry He barely lives, gets out of that one. Yeah, it's a pretty intense scrape. Yeah. We're getting close to the end. So, Dumbledore calls Harry and says, uh, we're going on a mission. You're coming with me. And they end up in the cave. The very scary very cave. Very scary cave in the middle of a lake. And they get in a boat, which this, in the movie... Very ominous. Yeah, very ominous. And in the movie, it was shot so cool. Mm-hmm. Like... You forget how badass Dumbledore is sometimes. So they 
go to the cave where Dumbledore suspects Voldemort hid another Horcrux. Mm-hmm. And so they go in this lake, and the only way to get to the Horcrux is to drink this potion that causes... That's covering the locket. Yes, that's covering the locket, and it leaves... Dumbledore decides, you know, he's like, you know what, I'm old, I'll do it, I'll take it, Harry, you get the locket, and whatever I say, don't let me stop drinking. Mm-hmm. And I also realize we have skipped over... Uh... Oh, before they go to the cave, Harry hides the Half-Blood Prince's book in the Room of Requirement, and he goes with Jenny and he decides not to use it but mm-hmm. anymore because of what happened to Malfoy. Yeah. And he and Jenny talk about it and they have their relationship. Yeah. Which everyone says do finally. A, they <laughs> do a they do a kiss. Yeah. Do a big kiss. Yeah. Anyway, cave. Back to cave. Anyway, they're in the cave. The cave is the important part. There We're not a, here for teenage drama there romance. There is a basin with scary green liquid in it and the yes. locket's at the bottom of it and you have to drink the liquid. You can't just dump it out. No, you have to drink it. That's the only way to get rid so of it. So Dumbledore's like, I'm old. I'll drink it. You get the locket. Don't let me stop, no matter what I say. He, Harry gets the locket and He then... gets these horrible visions and this horrible pain drinking this potion. Yeah. But they get through it together. He starts apologizing to somebody that Harry can't see. Mm-hmm. Um, does he say her name? I can't mm. remember if he says her name. Mm-mm. Yeah, but Dumbledore starts apologizing to a girl. Yeah. Um, for whatever has happened to her, we don't know the details, but they eventually get to the locket. They grab the locket out. Yeah. And they apparate back to. Well, they start trying to get out, and Harry is attacked by the Inferi. Right. Which the is the zombies. undead. Undead. In zombies. Cave. And Dumbledore gets him out of there. Yeah, Dumbledore goes whole flame wizard nonsense. Yeah, which is awesome. And gets them out. And then we come to the tower. The tower. The tower. The tower and tarot. People are always afraid of the devil card or the death card. No, you need to be afraid of the tower. But the tower is the card of turmoil. It means if you pull a tower, it means that things are about to get upended and fucked up big time. Yep. It means cataclysm. And in the tower, Harry hides as Dumbledore confronts Draco Malfoy, who yes. turns out to be the person, just like Harry suspected, who has been attempting to kill Dumbledore and this is all very year. very important. Draco disarms Dumbledore on the tower. Draco disarms Dumbledore with Expelliarmus, tells him he tried to po- he tried to kill him with a cursed necklace, he tried, tried to, to kill him, him with poisoned mead. And none of those things would work, so he's just going to kill him here and now. But he can't do it. He's no, 16 he can't years do old. It. He's been forced into this position by his family and the way he's been raised. Yeah. And he can't actually, essentially, quote, for more, for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. pull the trigger. And Severus And Snape, Snape walks in yeah. with a bunch of other Death Eaters, sees Draco hesitating, and Snape kills Dumbledore. Yes. Dumbledore is he from the pushes, tower. He pushes Draco to the side. He uses the killing curse to throw Dumbledore from the tower. And it is implied that Snape knows Harry is there under the invisibility cloak. Yeah. And doesn't say anything. So Snape kills Dumbledore. Snape kills Dumbledore. Death Eaters attack he, Hogwarts. Hogwarts is overtaken. Yeah, Hogwarts is overtaken. Uh, because the, the entire time what's been happening was that cabinet in the Room of Requirement had a pair in Borgen and Burks. yes. And the two Which cabinets. Which is the cabinet Harry hid in in book two. Mm hmm. Uh, so Malfoy has been repairing the cabinet in the room of requirement so that it could be used as a passageway from Borgen and Burks, through which he brings in all of the Death Eaters yes. who uh, attack Hogwarts, overtake it, and um, are attacking the students. Yes, and so DA comes back, they fight. The, the Dumbledore's army arises to the occasion. They fight off the the, the de- Death Eaters. The Death Eaters flee, and it is revealed and that... And Harry she- goes down, goes into a fight with Severus Snape outside of Hagrid's hut. Yeah, because Harry is, again, experiencing intense grief because he has seen a man that he has loved, that he has cared about, that he saw as a father figure, murdered in front of his eyes. 
And so he is furious with Snape. He attacks Snape. He uses the Sectum Semper spell yes. again to try and eviscerate Snape. Snape blocks it and says... How dare you use my own spell how against you, me? Wh- how dare you try to use my own spell against me? Reveals that he is, in fact, the Half-Blood Prince. Yes. And that Harry has been using Snape's book all year. Yes, Snape's getting, old potion book. Getting all of Snape's advice and spells from Snape's old potion book. Snape tortures Harry with the Cruciatus Curse. Yeah. But does not kill him, leaves him on the ground, and escapes with the other Death Eaters. Yes. At which point we get possibly the worst scene in the book, which is where Harry comes back to the school yes. to the foot of the astronomy tower, and where Dumbledore. Dumbledore's body has fallen. Yes. And McGonagall is there, and all the students are gathered around, and Hagrid is there, and they all lift their wands into the air and light them up in honor of Dumbledore, who yes. has been murdered by Snape. By somebody he trusted. And and then we get the ultimate blow, the potion that Dumbledore drank to gain this Horcrux locket. It was a fake locket. It was a fake locket. There's a note inside the locket from someone called R. R-A-B. R-A-B. It says, to the Dark Lord, I know I will be dead long before you read this, but I want you to know that it was I who discovered your secret. I have stolen the real Horcrux and intend to destroy it as soon as I can. I face death in the hope that when you meet your match, you will be mortal once more. R A B. So, so they wasted Dumbledore's all this time. Death was in vain. And energy and Dumbledore died in vain. Harry is going through it in a big way. Yes. And the the book ends on a very bleak note. Yeah, Minerva McGonagall is doing her best to kind of keep it together, but she has also lost a dearly trusted friend. She's also been deeply betrayed by Severus Snape, who she thought was a friend. They have a They have Death Eaters Dumbledore. in the school. Harry, she realizes Harry has been right all along, and they have a funeral for Dumbledore at the school. He's buried on Hogwarts grounds. In a white tomb. This is where Harry also breaks up with Ginny. Very yes. Spider-Man 2. Like, I can't be with you because it's not safe for you. Well, we talked about this last uh, episode where Harry has a martyr complex the size of California. Yeah. And he loves Ginny too much to put her in harm's way. But this is Ginevra fucking Weasley. Mm Mm-hmm. She will end you. So he breaks up with her. But she understands. She gets it. She knows it's not because he doesn't care about her. She knows it's because he does care about her. And she's like, I'll be here when you get back. And then Harry has an encou- has an encounter with Rufus Scrimgeour, the new Prime Minister of Magic, who tries to get him on his side, and Harry is like... Who he has already... Scrimgeour has already tried to get Harry on the ministry side before, but he does Harry this again. told him politely to fuck off. And this time Harry says he's Dumbledore's man through and through, mm-hmm. and that he wants nothing to do with Scrimgeour, and that the ministry can fuck off and die. Pretty much. It's great. Because the ministry allowed this to happen. Yeah. And he knows it. And so Harry, uh, we also have Bill, who's been attacked by Fenrir Greyback and is now part, partially, part, a werewolf. partially a werewolf. And Molly Weasley. This is one of the best Which Bill things. and Fleur are now a couple and yeah. they're going to get married. And so Molly says something along the lines of, well, I guess the wedding is off. And, she, and Fleur is like, why would you say that? Why would you think that I would be so shallow? It's like if my my these scars show that my husband is brave. I'm not leaving him because of this. Which of course then triggers a argument slash discussion between Nymphadora Tonks and, and Remus, Remus Lupin, Lupin, who Tonks has been in love with Lupin, but he's thus far rejected her because of his werewolf. Yeah, he doesn't want to hurt her. And she says. If this isn't evidence to you that we can make this work. Mm-hmm. So it's it's an interesting ending because even admits the tragedy and the death, you still have love blossoming. You still have a wedding being planned. Yeah. Um, and which is McGonagall really- even says, she's like, I'd like to think, it may not be McGonagall, but somebody says that she's like, I know Albus Dumbledore would like to know there's a little bit more love in the world. Mm-hmm. 
Because it's like love, love prospers even in the face of death and tragedy. Yeah, which is what this whole series is about. But this whole book ends with Harry telling Jenny and his friends that he's not coming back to Hogwarts for his seventh year. He's going to find the he Horcruxes. He has been given a mission by Dumbledore to find the Horcruxes and destroy them so he can defeat Voldemort. And he is... He's not really ready to do that, but he knows he has to, and he's the only one who can. Because he's the only one who knows what Dumbledore knew. And so Ron and Hermione are like, you don't think you're going by yourself, do you? We signed on... We made our choice a long time ago. Yeah. We're sticking with you. And so... This is Harry's last full year at Hogwarts. It's a very bleak ending. It is a very bleak ending. But it does have some hope to it. And, you know, Dumbledore dying was the most shocking moment yeah. in Harry Potter. Like, Snape kills Dumbledore is still a joke. Like, it's yeah. still a joke among people, like, talking about spoilers. Like, talk about the biggest spoiler in yeah, pop Snape culture. Like, we all... Nobody knew what to think of Snape. No. no one knew what to think of After Snape. After this book, the first read-through, I was convinced Snape was Voldemort's man. Mm-hmm. No one knows what to think of Snape, and the fact that Snape has killed Dumbledore, his mentor, Harry's mentor... Yes. Is... And by extension, our mentor... And, of course, at this point, we had better opinions of Dumbledore than we That's do true. now. We did have better opinions of he Dumbledore He seemed than we do a now. lot more noble than he does after rereads and after reading the, the seventh book. But that's the whole thing of it. And is after that, thinking about it. <laughs> that's, the whole, that's the whole thing of it is, like, without the context of the seventh book, this just looks like Snape is evil and yeah. we've had a hero murdered. And while I am still sorry that Dumbledore died, like, yes. don't get me wrong... My feelings on it are much more complex. My feelings on it are after much more... having the full story. Yeah. My feelings on it are much more complex now than they were in my first read through. Because I remember reading it the first time and crying hysterically for a good long time after Dumbledore died. Oh yeah. And I woke my mom was asleep and I woke her up in my room on the second floor and she's like, Are you okay? And I'm like, Dumbledore just died <laughs> And she's like, Okay. I remember reading this book for the first time. Uh, it was, again, a midnight premiere. I mm. got the book. Mm -hmm. Came home. I was reading along with my best friend, Kelly. Yes. Who is a slower reader than I am. Oh, so you had to keep your trap shut. I was having a meltdown. Yeah. Quietly. <laughs> She's still reading, and I'm sitting over in the corner just like oh, with my God. head in my hands not saying any words because I don't know. How. Like, the thing about Harry Potter is, if you came into Harry Potter when it was new, if you came into the Harry yes. Potter, like, I'm not going to say that people are not going to enjoy Harry Potter now, but if you were part of the Harry Potter fandom as it was happening, yeah, as in real time, out. it was like nothing else I've ever experienced. Mm -mm. It was just like... And it's like and it's like nothing else we probably ever will experience ever again. I mean, I was 16 years old when I read the sixth Harry Potter book. We grew up with this series. This series is our childhood. And, like, reading about this 16-year-old kid going through this shit and, like, seeing his mentor murdered, like, and seeing this character that I've been reading for six yes. books and loving for six books being brutally killed by another character who I've never quite understood. Or liked. It was a lot. It, it was. was. It's and fucking fascinating, sociologically you always, speaking. There's, there's something about this, too, where it's like you always knew as long as Dumbledore was around, there was hope. Everything was going to be okay. There was hope. And now Harry has to become that hope. And it's a lot to take on his shoulders. Like, yeah, we talked, about, we talked about in book five how Sirius Black's death was probably the first yeah. major character death that really hit us as readers. But Dumbledore's death signified something else. It signified maybe this wasn't going to end as a happily ever after. Yeah. Maybe this was all going to go south. Maybe Voldemort really would win. Yeah. Because Dumbledore was always a symbol of, like, the fight against Voldemort, and now he's gone. Yeah. And it's just... He was always this pillar of light that stood against Voldemort. You know, Voldemort and Dumbledore were the opposite sides of the same coin. <laughs> and now with Dumbledore being gone, that darkness... Is just, there's nothing to stand against it. And it seems like Harry and Ron and Hermione, since we've grown up with them, it doesn't seem like they're 
and they probably don't feel like they're enough. Right. And as readers, we're worried that they're going to be enough. Yeah, there's just the amount of confidence I have in the characters after this point is diminished because I'm afraid that they're not going to have enough ability to to you know defeat yeah. evil in the end. Because Dumbledore was 150. Harry's 16. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, even the ages of Ron, Harry, and Hermione combined don't get anywhere near Dumbledore. And this book also just has a lot that we did not cover. Yeah, there's, there's a lot the of relationships. There's the whole Ron Weasley, Lavender Brown relationship and the tension between Ron there's and Hermione. There's the whole Ginny Harry relationship that we glazed over. There's the whole um, there's the whole Dean Ginny relationship. This is really the book too where Ginny really kind of comes into her own. Like she was really starting to come into her own in the last book. Mm -hmm. This book, uh, now that she's a fifth year, she really like she brings it. She's... Yeah, that bogey hex, man. Yeah. The thing is, the thing is, at this book, everyone has become fairly competent yes. spellcasters and wizards and people. They're growing up. They're growing up. But, I mean, don't take that away from the fact that they are still 15, 16-year-old children. children. And they're being, they're being hoisted into this war against, like, ultimate evil. It's kind of intense. Yeah, <laughs> this is... But this book, it really relies heavily on the situational irony. The, yeah. The, you know, Dumbledore has all this information about Tom Riddle, but he didn't know that the locket was a fake. Yeah. And the thing with the locket is fascinating because I finished reading this book and mm -hmm. immediately was like, I know who has the locket. You did. Immediately. I'm very proud of you. I was like, I know. I was completely lost. I rolled back to book five. As soon as I finished, as I went and picked up book five and started scouring through it for the passage where they throw away. It's always a throwaway passage. They throw, well, they're like Harry, Ron, and Hermione are cleaning out Grimwald Place. Yeah. And throw the locket away in yeah. book five. And I'm like, I know who took the locket. I know where it is now. And I just spent the next year and a half being like, please just confirm my fucking yes. psychotic ravings. And you were correct. And I was correct. Um, I'm very good at this. You are. <laughs> You're the only person I know who worked out Taz's uh, balance before. <laughs> the whole thing. You got the whole thing. I got like 60% of it. But um, that is something that I do have to commend Joanne Rowling for is her the amount of planning she did for this series and the attention to detail mm -hmm. that she had for this series is astonishing. well I mean we encountered our first horcrux in the second book before we even know what a horcrux was yeah and we had even hints of a horcrux in the first book yeah yeah when Harry asked Dumbledore when he's in the hospital wing, when he's 11 years old, he's like, well, since the Sorcerer's Stone is destroyed, does that mean Voldemort can never come back? And Dumbledore is like, there are other ways. more complicated than that, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, she, she had this game plan plotted out well in yeah. advance. And you can really see it in these later novels that she had it plotted it's out. It's starting to come together. It's not a Game Harry of Thrones situation the where they make it work. Harry Kid in the second book. Yeah. We also have, uh, in this book, people started disappearing. Like, uh, the owner of the ice cream shop that Harry spent... Florin Fluskew. Yeah. The owner of the ice cream shop <laughs> in Diagon Alley disappeared. Um, and so she's like, that's not going to have any resonance to readers unless Harry has, you know, had some experience with this person, like doing his homework and eating Sundays. That's the thing about writing a novel in, um, first person limited point of view. Yeah. Is that you have to make everything relate to that, the limited characters that you have chosen yes. to do your point of view from. And this book is exclusively from the point of view of Harry. Yeah. And Helen Abbott's mother, uh, died and she ends up with uh hannah, hannah abbott yeah hannah abbott not helen hannah abbott mm -hmm. yeah so harry has to have context for all he of does. the people that that are mentioned in the book otherwise it wouldn't work so the fact that she was successfully able to incorporate harry's context for these characters into the story well before she chose to do something yeah. horrible to them that makes the emotional impact on us the reader that much stronger because we're like, Harry knows this character. Yeah. The amount of planning and scheming she had to do to get to Deathly Hallows. 
which is going to be our last read of the year. It's so gonna it's gonna be a it, it's gonna be big a big kahuna. Co- it's gonna be a big kahuna, so it's gonna be like a big New Year's Eve blowout episode. <laughs> um where I watch Casey get drunk. Um, <laughs> Casey gets drunk and is like, Harry Potter is too much for me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it's, but that's really, it, it's a six book work for a one book payoff. Yeah. And it's. It works out though. It does. It works out. Whatever else I have to say about J.K. Rowling, the, the uh, plot and the focus, the Harry centric focus of these novels Works out so well. And the themes we are really starting to see consistently in the book are, um, especially in this book, is we're getting back to the duality of Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy. Yes. Where they're both victims of circumstance. They are both put in these positions by men of power, their father or their father figure, where... They are having pressure put on them, and they're... To behave in a certain way. To behave in a certain way. And they probably would have been friends if they had not been pushed to opposite sides. There's a lot to be said about the sorting hat and this whole concept of separating children into four separate groups based on small, specific personality traits. Like, if you're loyal, you're a Hufflepuff. If you're cunning, you're a Slytherin. Like... Yeah, if you're, you're basically brave, you're a Gryffindor. You're basically creating factions that are going to fight against each other, no matter what you do. And I understand that, like this has been the place, the way for over a hundred yes. years. And I understand that Slytherins in general have not always been good people. No, but, but if, what would have happened mean... if Draco Malfoy had been sorted into Ravenclaw? Like, I mean, yeah, I don't think he would have had as much pressure from his family to toe the family line, so to speak, if he had been sorted or into Or he may house. have gotten as much pressure, but the people he was surrounded by maybe would have made, he would have valued their friendships. Maybe Harry yes. would have been willing to be friends with someone in Ravenclaw as opposed to someone in Slytherin. Yes. Like, because as loving and caring and compassionate as Harry is, and all of these characters are, they've got their biases. a huge prejudice against Slytherin, which I think is a little unfair. Joey and Kathleen Rowling. Um, and I am not a Slytherin. I am a Hufflepuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I well, married a Slytherin. <laughs> well, I mean, like, we read, we've read, we read the Divergent series. Yes. And the whole thing is we created these factions so that we can control people because it's an us versus them mentality. Yeah. And that's what's happening here with the Hogwarts and houses. Any time we are trained to see people as other is not good. Right, and so the us versus them thing is what causes the the uh, you know the he- butting of heads between Harry and Draco. This, you also see this too with the whole half blood, pure blood, mud blood mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. situation. Because the pure although that's a more like traditional us against the mud bloods. Although that's a more traditional um, racism. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas the thing with the houses is a completely it's completely fabricated by the school. Yeah. But what we're having here is like, who would have Draco Malfoy been if he had had friends? Yeah. It suggests that like who you are, who you are is the choices you make and what you do. Yes, and that but the is choices another you big make theme of this and book. what you do are going to be heavily influenced the by house, the people you surround yourself by. The house sorting is rather contradictory to the overall messages of this book, or who mm-hmm. you are is your choices that you make. Mm-hmm. Who you are is the the friends that you make and the love that you choose to show to other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, love and death are, like, two major themes we see in this whole series. Yo. Um, especially with that whole theory about Dumbledore being death, which we will get into in the next Ooh. book. Um, but... I'm not drunk enough for that. Mm. Drink more. That's Deathly the next Hallows. book. Deathly Hallows. Deathly Hallows. You have a month to get drunk enough for that. Um, so we have the themes of love and death and the conquering of death. And um, the reason Voldemort did all these horcruxes is because he wanted to become immortal. Which, and he again, why? Of, yes. But it's interesting how his idea of someone who cannot love is more interested in prolonging his life than someone who's saying, 
love will save us in the end. Love is the thing that we need to hold on to. Right. And so it's like love almost equates to living your life over. Um, to the fullest while you to, have to it. To the fullest while you have it. So it says the thing that makes love and life, the thing that makes life important is love, and love cannot happen if life is forever. Right. The thing that makes life worth living is the other people that you interact yes. with along the way. And if you're immortal, you lose those people along the way. And it's not a coincidence that Voldemort, who is virtually immortal, also is incapable of love. Yes. It's very fucked up. I'm very tired. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so a, that's Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. Half Blood Prince. If you liked that, how good. Many, how many bottles would you give it? Fuck. Um, <laughs> four. I guess four. It's up there for me. It's one of my favorite Harry Potter yeah. books. Mm. I give it four. What about you? I'd say 3.75. It's not quite poor for me. I think I, I could use less teenage angst relationship. <laughs> Yo, I just kind of breezed past all that shit. I was just like, you know what? But she writes teenagers well. Yeah, she does. She writes, she writes them honestly, well. which I appreciate. Yes. So there you go. Uh, the book has... Almost four bottles. Almost four bottles of wine, which is plenty to get you good and wasted. Yeah, because you're a bottle and a half in. <laughs> and um yeah so we will be reading harry potter and the deathly hollows it'll be our final book of the year yes we don't yet know what our second to last book of the year our penultimate book of the year no, will be we'll let you know as soon as we do in the meantime yeah. if you enjoyed this share it with your friends uh you can find us on facebook instagram twitter and wherever you listen to your podcasts also check out our website lit literaturepodcast.com for more information Yes, and uh, we will let you know what is happening with uh, maternity leave for myself once we discuss that. We have some surprises in store that we hopefully think will work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we will discuss that when Casey is sober. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. Also check out our Patreon. Um, yes. I'm getting married. Liz is having babies. We're yes. very poor. Please help. Please help. <laughs> um, and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for listening to our podcast. For more information, visit us at litliteraturepodcast.com or check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And remember, too much work and no vacation deserves at least a small libation. Cheers! Cheers.